Hi, everyone. Wow, it's great to be here. I'm Tayasue, co-director and lead game design for Kingdom Hearts 3. And today I'll be talking a little bit about the main game design of Kingdom Hearts 3, as well as how we use Unreal Engine 4 to create the graphics for our environments. So now let's talk about uh, the game design. Kingdom Hearts 3 was all about creating an abundance of delightful choices for the players. We wanted players to choose our actions, not just because it was a strategic necessity, but because it was a thrill to use. To have the battle constantly evolve and be full of sur surprises, we created commands that would pop up sometimes several at a time to do things such as Keyblade transfers, transportations and uh, summon, summoning theme parks and also doing dynamic cooperative attacks with your friends. For those who like speed and dynamic movement, we created the shot lock system where you could lock onto several enemies at once and zoom towards them in a flash of light and also sh shoot a volley of attacks at your enemies. Here's the link system which are magical spells. Um, this is, uh, sh uh, this is, we wanted people to really feel that they were creating their own magical spell show. And so for Ariel, you would uh, place different fountains in the move and create a magical water show at the end. And for Ralph, you would place different cap cannons so that you could uh, create your own original trap pattern. Because there was so much you can do, there it was a huge challenge to create each action and get them right in a variety of settings. So we created uh, these sandbox environments to get the specifics right, like the height of a jump or the speed of a run. Another challenge was doing all the highly stylized assets and creating them, um, for example, the ex uh, effects. Um, each effect in Kingdom Hearts 3 had a sort of dramatic arc with a beginning, a climax, and a resolution. So we created a timeline module inside Cascade that let us control the timing of each uh, effect generated. For example, for lightning, well, there's a lightning striking and there's an explosion, and at the end, particles float in the air. For the animations, we used a mixture of procedural techniques and also handcrafted keyframe animations. An example of the newer procedural techniques would be Rapunzel's hair. Uh, we integrated uh, in-house uh, tools so that Rapunzel's hair would react physically to her environment. Here's an example of a handcrafted keyframe key animation where we created the Keyblades transforming with the bones sort of scaling to create tune-like and anime-like expressions. Uh, we couldn't rely too much on um, efficient middleware to create a lot of our assets because they were so varied. Instead, we relied on the craftsmanship of our animators to create gameplay that was beautiful and bold. Next up, I would like to talk about the graphics and how we created them. Uh, we wanted players to feel like they were playing in the original Disney film, so, and because original films had these unique artistic styles, we created whole new looks for each world with different shaders and different textures, different materials. In the Pirates of the Caribbean world, we created a system where you could combine different sets of waves to create realistic waves to match the film. So by changing the parameters and properties, you could change, make the waves into peaceful waves, choppy waves, and stormy waves. Another thing we wanted to get right were the clouds. Um, each world in Kingdom Hearts 3 had these stylized clouds, so we created a ray marching feature that let us create volumetric clouds. And by changing the properties, we could make, change the movement, uh, the shape, and the texture of the clouds to fit the original movie. Hmm. And here's one of my favorite scenes from the Tangled, uh, tangled, scene, tangled World, uh, without any shaders or lighting, looking very different from the film. And I'd like to show you what happens when you add our post-processing post features. So one of the things we really worked on were the shaders, and there were four different shaders in the game. And by changing them, we could change the color of shadows. And I guess we could do other things, like uh, create borders to create a more vibrant look. And here we're changing the color scheme and adding effects to create a warm, magical look that really matches the film. And finally, we're adding particles that are light uh, lanterns. So we were able to change in real time and rap rapidly iterate the number of uh, lanterns to really match the look of the film. So that was my uh, short presentation. Um, I'd just like to add one more thing. Um, Unreal Engine was excellent, amazing technology, very cutting edge. But I think one of the biggest draws for me personally was the ability to collaborate with a huge epic community. Um, when we really crashed into a huge wall, there was always someone there to help us out. 
And I guess Kingdom Hearts 3 you know, as a whole is a huge collaborative endeavor with our friends from Disney and Pixar really working with us um, and giving us great feedback on story animation and art and the Epic community really giving us and sharing technology with us. And so that was great. And most of all, I guess the fans, they were excellent. Um, they really um, gave us a sense and meaning to what we were doing. And I guess that really pulled us through. So I'd like to thank everyone that was involved. And I think I'd just like to say that the game is what it is because of you guys. So thank you. Thanks. Thank you. What a, what a cool look under the hood.